students, welcome to our new lesson. In our previous lesson, we talked about uniform motion and uniformly accelerated motion. Now for the recap, let us answer a sample problem. A car accelerates with uniform acceleration from 11.1 meter per seconds to 22.2 meter per seconds in 5 seconds. The first question is what was the acceleration of the car? And the second one is how far did it travel during the acceleration? First, we're going to answer what was the acceleration of the car. Let us identify first the given. The initial velocity is 11.1 meter per second. Time is 5 seconds. Final velocity is 22.2 meter per second. Unknown in the question 1 or question A is acceleration. The formula for acceleration is Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. 22.2 meter per second minus 11.1 meter per second is 11.1 meter per second divided by time, which is 5 seconds. The answer is 2.22 meter per second squared. Now, how are we going to solve for the second question or the question B? How far did it travel during the acceleration? The question how far is asking for displacement or distance. To answer the question B or how far did it travel during the acceleration, we will tackle kinematics in one dimension motion. For today's lesson, we will discuss the four kinematic equations or what we call the big four. The kinematic equations are set of four equations that can be utilized to predict unknown information about an object's motion if other information is unknown. Each of the kinematic equations include four variables. So these are the kinematic equations. Now there are a variety of symbols used in these equations. Each symbol has its own specific meaning. The symbol for D stands for displacement. The symbol for T stands for time, and the symbol for A stands for acceleration, and V stands for velocity. Now, the subscript I after the V indicates that the velocity is the initial velocity, while the subscript F indicates that the velocity is the final velocity. The equations can be utilized for any motions that can be described as being either a constant velocity motion or an acceleration with 0 meter per second squared, or it can also be utilized in a constant acceleration motion. But they can never be used over any time period during which the acceleration is changing. Now, let us go back to the problem I presented to you a while ago. Let us calculate the displacement using two formulas in kinematics. Again, the given is initial velocity with 11.1 meter per second, Time is 5 seconds, final velocity is 22.2 meter per second, and as we calculated a while ago, acceleration is equal to 2.22 meter per second squared. So, let us use first formula, displacement is equal to 1 half multiplied by initial velocity plus final velocity multiplied by time. Now, let us substitute the formula. The 1 half here, we're going to convert it into decimals, which is 0 0.5. The initial velocity is 11.1 meter per second. Final velocity is 22.2 meter per second. Time is 5 seconds. Now first, we're going to add 11.1 meter per second to 22.2 meter per second. Then, we're going to multiply the answer to 0 0.5. And the answer is 16.65 meter per second. Then we're going to multiply it with 5 seconds. Then the final answer is 83.25 meters. Now we're going to use the other formula, which is initial velocity multiplied by time plus 1 half acceleration multiplied by time being squared. Now let us substitute the formula. Initial velocity with 11.1 meter per second. Time is 5 seconds. The 1 half here, we're going to convert it into decimals, which is 0 0.5. Acceleration is 2.22 meter per second squared. Then, time is 5 seconds. Now, we're going to multiply initial velocity with time. And the answer is 55.5 meters. Then, we're going to multiply 
0.5 to 2.22 meter per second squared. And the answer is 1.11 meter per second squared. Then we're going to square the time. The squared of 5 is 25. Then we're going to add 55.5 meter plus 27.75 meter. And the answer is 83.25 meters. So as you can see, whether we use the first formula or the second formula, we will get the same answer. Now, let us have another example. Suppose a planner is designing an airport for a small airplanes. Such planes must reach a speed of 56 meter per second and can accelerate at 12 meter per second squared. Now, what is the minimum length for the runaway of this airport? First, let us identify the given. The final velocity is 56 meter per second. The acceleration is 12 meter per second squared, while the initial velocity is 0 meter per second. Now, the question is, what is the minimum length? So therefore, the unknown here is displacement. Now, based on the four kinematic equations, we're going to use the Vf squared is equals to Vi squared plus 2ad. Final velocity is given. The acceleration is given. The initial velocity is given. Now, we're going to convert this formula. But since initial velocity is 0, we're not going to write initial velocity here. But instead, we're going to write Vf squared is equals to 2ad. Now, to get the formula for displacement, we have to divide both sides by 2a or 2 acceleration. And we have the formula for displacement. So we have Vf squared divided by 2a. Now we can proceed to our solution. Vf squared, which is 56 Vn squared, the answer is 3136. And 2 multiplied by 12 is 24 meter per second squared. Now, 3136 divided by 24 is 130.67 meter. Now, let us have another example. How long does it take a car to travel 30 meter if it accelerates from rest at a rate of 2 meter per second squared? Now, based on four kinematic equations, what do you think is the formula we're going to use? So, to find out, let us identify first the given. We have distance with 30 meters, acceleration with 2 meter per second squared, the initial velocity is 0 meter per second. Now, we have here displacement and acceleration. So, based on four kinematic equations, we will get what? We will have displacement is equal to initial velocity plus time plus 1 half at squared. Now, but since initial velocity is 0, we will cancel that out. So, the remaining formula is 1 half at squared. Now, to get the formula for time, we need to do cross multiplication first for the 1 half. So, we will get 2d is equal to at squared. Now, to get the formula for time, we need to divide both sides by acceleration. So, we now have p squared is equal to 2d divided by acceleration. Now, we are looking for time, not p squared. Now, to cancel the squared, we need to do square root. We need to square root the both sides. So, the final formula is t is equal to the square root of 2d divided by acceleration. Now, we can now proceed with our solution. Time is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by 30 meter divided by 2 meter per second squared. So, 2 multiplied by 30 is 60 divided by 2 meter per second squared is 30 seconds squared. And the square root of 30 is 5.48 seconds. Suppose we plot the velocity versus time graph of an object undergoing uniformly accelerated motion. If the object has a uniform acceleration of 5 meter per second squared and started from rest, then each succeeding second the velocity will increase by 5 meter per second. The slope of the line is the acceleration. Now, if you take any segment of this line and determine the average y and average x, you will get 5 meter per second squared, which we know 
to be the constant acceleration of this object. We know from geometry that the area of a triangle is calculated by multiplying one half of the base times the height. The area under the curve is the area of the triangle. Now let us compute first the area of a triangle. So we have here one half multiplied by base times height. One half here, we will convert it into decimals, which is 0 0.5. The base here is the 5 seconds. So we have here 5. The height here is the 25. Okay, the height is 25. So 0 0.5 multiplied by 5 is 2.5 multiplied by 25. Therefore, the area of the triangle is 62.5. Now, we can also calculate by going back to the equations of the displacement, which is 1 half 80 squared. Again, 1 half will be converted into decimals, which is 0 0.5. Acceleration is 5. Time is 5. So, 0 0.5 multiplied by 5 is 2.5, and the squared of 5 is 25. Now, when you multiply 2.5 by 25, the answer is 62.5. So, as you can see, in the formula of area of the triangle, the answer is 62.5. In the formula of one of the kinematic equations, the answer is 62.5. It is not coincidental that this number is the same as the area of the triangle. In fact, the area underneath the curve in a velocity versus time graph is always equal to the displacement that occurs during that time interval. Now, again, this computation is only applicable if the initial velocity is zero. So that's it. See you in our next lesson. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you will be notified for more videos like this.